Hey y'all, this is episode two of building a welding truck. Uh, I did lose a little bit of footage on getting started lifting that box bed off the original flatbed. So I apologize for that. I think I probably thought I hit record, but didn't. Anyways, uh, it picks up with me setting the bed on the ground or just having set the bed on the ground and then prepping the truck to accept the new bed. So if you watched the first video, you know all about the, uh, not box bed, but tool body, utility truck body, uh, truck box. Depending on where you are as to what you call it, it's what goes behind the cab on a truck or a ute if you're in Australia and you use communist measurements. Anyways, hope you enjoy it. Here you go. And there we have it. <sighs> Didn't scare me at all. Didn't almost kill me or nothing. Anyways, it's on the ground. Now I can get started cutting what's left of an old box bed that somebody decided to turn into a flatbed off my new truck or my new old truck. Okay, here we are under baby and looks are deceiving. It appears that that two piece piece of angle with a bolt and all that that's welded to the frame like it never should have been. And the other one that's very similar to it back there is all that's holding this bed. But like I said, looks can be deceiving. We've got about a 10 inch long weld bead there. And then let's go under. Ah. Right there, as you can see, is some pieces of angle strategically placed down through there, welded to the top of the frame and welded to the bottom of the bed. Why people find it necessary to weld on the bed of a truck or weld on the frame of a truck, I have no idea. DOT does not like that, but here we are. So what I'm gonna do is what I have to do, which is cut all that crap loose so I can get this bed off here. Given the fact that that particular weld is right at the very front of the fuel tank and I'm going to have to be squirting hot molten steel in that direction, I'm going to switch over to Sawzall. Alright, so obviously it's a good little ways later and a trip to town later, but yeah, turns out them four bolts with the angle is all that was actually holding the bed to the truck. The rest of it is just some really stupid modifications that somebody else added to make it look pretty. Anyways, I'm going to go on ahead and just pull the bed so that I can get there and cut all that modification off. And yeah, so this should go without saying, but I do not advise anybody to trust the limb of a Bradford pear tree anywhere near as much as I'm trusting that one. So, 
yeah let me go on ahead and get my truck out from under this thing before that limb decides it wants to just quit doing what i'm asking it to do all right so i got baby out of the way and now i'm just easing this thing down trying to keep it from turning my tractor over on her side a little tractor's made in china but i've kind of gotten attached to it I gotta get this side all the way down to the ground so that I can release the chain hoist and hook it to the end of the tractor boom so that I can release that chain. Because the boom don't go down as far as I need it to. What a shock. And once all this is over with, I get to figure out how I'm getting up there to get the rest of my chain off this tree. Nice. So, yeah, let me just go on ahead and get done doing this. All right, so now we're down to almost bare frame rails i hooked the tractor to the front of that bed and i drug it to the backyard had to had the front wheels of the tractor in there the whole time so there wasn't exactly a free hand to be doing any videoing with but here we go <coughs> now you can get a better look at these pieces of angle that somebody put down through there to support what appears to be another piece of angle that they notched to match the top side of the frame i'm deleting every single little bit of that there's no point in that being there they shouldn't have welded to the frame of the truck but it is what it is i got to delete it also somebody at some point in the past had a gooseneck <coughs> attached back here so that's also a problem I'm not going to bother cutting any of it out because there's none of it left, really. But, yeah. Don't weld on truck frames. If you weld on truck frames, quit it. Okay, so now all that extra crap's been cut off and I took the high-speed porcupine producer there attached to my right-angle milling machine and just kind of cleaned up the top side of these frame rails. I'm still going to take a regular grinding disc and clean all these stubs that are left over from all the other off of here well it is the next morning and as you can see i am doing something that goes against every fiber of my being i'm doing body work i gotta prep the surface of the back of that cab so that i can put a proper layer of paint on the back of it so that this truck can possibly last another 46 to 89 years whatever and uh yeah that's the idea so i'm just taking the da and that little die grinder with a roll lock pad 
and sanding the paint on the back of the cab, getting the old rattle can and the other layer of paint off of it so that I can get down to a proper surface and throw some paint on this thing. Yes, I'm putting more rattle can on it, but with proper surface prep, that rattle can should work and should last. So here we go. All right, now that surface is as prepped as that surface is gonna get prepped. So I'm gonna soak a rag down with some brake clean because brake clean's mostly acetone. And I'm gonna wash that, and then I can shoot some paint on it. All right, so now she's nice and clean. And as you can probably already hear, weapon of choice, Rust-Oleum, flat black, high performance, quick drying, fancy paint. <clears throat> oh, come on now. Little nozzle fell off. All right. Here we go. I did not bother taping the back glass off because honestly, when this truck is done, you ain't gonna be able to see out the back glass anyways. So I don't care if I get some overspray on it. I'm changing the doors too, so I don't care about the door glass. I just want this back side of this cab to be all one color and that's what I'm doing. This is a work truck. This is not a concourse restoration. This is just to make it all one color and make it where I can use it. So Obviously, I'm just going to keep on going like I'm going and get runs in it. And yeah, because it's too cold out here for painting, but I got to get it done. Well, there it is. Back of the cab is now flat black. No, I didn't bother with any of the above the rear glass painting area because I can get to that with the bed still on the truck and yeah this type of stuff is the reason for that particular paint job so yeah I didn't do any dent straightening or mud spreading because the bed's going right there you ain't gonna be able to see it anyways just, I wanted it to not be peeling and be black. So, now it's black and it's not going to peel. Here we go. Alright, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit, but I sanded the front of the bed and flat blacked it. So, waiting on that to dry now. And once that's dry, I'll pick that bed up and back this forward end under it and see how she's going to fit. Alright, if the way I do things ain't sketchy enough for you... I'm sorry, but there you go. I got one little old half ton hobo freight chain fall come along thing holding all that bed. And I got it up in the air a little bit, probably not high enough. I go, I'm just going to ease the truck back to it and see how much higher up I got to go and all that good stuff. I would be using that one over there to hold that side and that one there to hold this side, but. The problem with that is that one over there will allow you to lift a load, but it don't hold the load up. As soon as you turn loose of the chain, the load's coming to the ground as fast as gravity will bring it to you. So, yeah, one chain, full, one chain hoist it is. Here we go. All right, so I got the truck far enough up under it to where I can start kind of easing it down and 
this is the sketchy part because that chain hoist don't like to just let me ease things down. I gotta keep snatching on that chain and bumping it down and that's just not a good time for anybody. But yeah, hopefully it's close enough to where I can start easing it down and not drop it and destroy anything. Love working by myself. Well, she's sitting on there. I still got to make all the mountain brackets, but that's right about where that bed's going to live. I got the rear wheels just about centered in the arches by eyeball. I'm still going to have to pull tape measure and make sure she's centered side to side and wheel arches and all. But uh, there's the passenger side. Passenger side's in a little bit better shape around the wheel arch than the driver's side. Looks like she needs to go a little bit forward over here, but that's a shadow at the back of the wheel right there. So, yeah. We got about the right gap between the cab and the bed. The bed's sitting where it's going to sit. Now the hard part, making all these brackets. All right, so I crawled up under the truck and figured out what I'm gonna have to use for brackets. I got some of this left over. It was the part of the mount for my hobo freight crane that I put on the Dodge. But anyways, I'm gonna put four. That hole's already 9 sixteenths diameter, but I'm gonna go on ahead and make these other three 9 sixteenths. <laughs> and then do the same thing with the other bracket that I have left laying over here. Once them are done, each one of them is going to go right up in here. Right like that. And it's going to bolt to the bed at the top and bolt through the frame on the bottom and yeah i'm just gonna leave that little piece of angle right there and put a bolt through it too it'll hold a half inch bolt and yeah it held the old bed on this truck for a long time and i jerked and snatched and did all kind of stupid stuff with that so it'll be fine for this bed anyways got my little hobo freight uh bench drill press thing here so using a block of wood and just gonna stick it on there like so hold it with my hand and drill the hole through not exactly ideal but it'll work there maybe y'all can see You ain't got to try to gouge it, just go gentle. Obviously, them holes are not big enough for a half inch bolt, so I gotta go get a 9 16 drill bit. Because 9 16 is a 16th of an inch bigger than half inch, and that's the size bolts that I'm going with. And if you drill just a half inch hole for a half inch bolt, then you're not giving yourself any sort of wiggle room. We need wiggle room. I'll be right back. Well, I went and grabbed this poor specimen. It's the only one I can remember where it's at. It's 9 sixteenths, but the end of it is all kind of chewed up. So, now I've got a right angle milling machine rigged up in the vise to use as a bench grinder so I can put a decent little edge on this drill bit, finish doing what I gotta do. Like I got time for all this.
There. Now my hand feels a little safer. Safer. to buying junk tools like this little hobo freight bench drill press. One of those advantages is it ain't got enough power to swing this thing out of my hand and make me eat part of it. take my right angle milling machine and deburr everything clean it all up and I can get up under the truck and clamp them in place sand the drill bit and yeah bolt everything up fun stuff Now, got two brackets, and they're done. Cleaned up, deburred, all that good stuff. A couple hand clamps, and now I get to wrestle with the drill up under the truck. Anytime I say hand clamps, that's what I'm talking about. The guy I used to work with called them vice C's. I have no idea why. Good enough. Now I can take a drill, aim up in there, and shoot me some holes. All right, so I waddled up there to the shed, and I grabbed 
a 15 30 seconds uh, transfer punch and I know that's smaller than a 9 16 but it's the closest I had that I hadn't already flattened the end on by hitting it too hard because these are made out of tissue paper and not hardened steel like a center punch should be but anyways I went in and roughly centered it in each of them four holes and made me a little pack mark so what I'm going to do is take the small electric drill that should reach in there. Yep, reaches. And I'm going to line up on that center punch mark and send some holes through to the inside of the frame of the truck. And then I'll be able to get in between the frame rails and drill outward into the holes that I need to be drilling into. That's the plan. The problem is... It's too tight up in here. I ain't going to be able to show you what I'm doing. So I'm just going to stick y'all in the tripod where maybe you can kind of see what's going on and hear what I'm saying. I gotta go get some bolts and then I gotta send that 9 16 bit through there and uh, stick a bolt in the hole and get it tight. You do one bolt at a time, that way you don't perfectly drill one hole and then get off on the second and end up throwing your whole shooting match off. Alright, so I went and grabbed some bolts and then I remembered that I'm an idiot and I have an air drill. In case you didn't know, air drills don't have as much torque as a half inch chuck electric Milwaukee drill does. So that's not so likely to try to twist my arm all to pieces. So I'll be using that. I also grabbed my little 3 8 impact and a 3 quarter wrench. So now I just go down through here and add bolts. Oh, also, I'm not going to bother bolting the angle to the bed. I'm just going to weld it. It'll be there. Okay, so I got them two bolts in, and like I said, I'm not going to bother trying to drill and bolt the top because I'm not very smart and I put the these bolts in the way of getting them bolts in anyways and yeah I can just take the 7018 plug weld that plug weld there weld here and around the front she'll be there she ain't going nowhere all right so now all the bolts are in and I have obviously deleted the tail lights that somebody else threw under here, I ain't no telling how long ago. They were still working, but they're like two feet up under the bed. You ain't seeing them from behind this truck. <clears throat> I've still got to delete what's left of that Reese receiver hitch right there. But anyways, that can come later. I got to get this bed mounted. So I'm fixing to fire the linking up and weld around them clips. And that'll secure the bed in the rear and then up front i believe i gotta have some uh u-bolts i'm gonna go with half inch or five eighths whichever ones i can find and that holds the front and that appears to be the only support that nap had designed this bed to have front and rear is bolt it back here and you bolt it up front so I'm going to do that, and if it starts moving around and shifting and giving me trouble, then I'll come back later and do something different. Also, I don't know about y'all, but I don't run mud flaps, so they're going to get deleted. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> All right, 
kind of got into that nylock a little bit, but it'll be all right. Anyways, it don't look pretty, but it ain't going nowhere. So now I just got to go up to the front and figure out a U-boat type situation. And then this bed is mounted. Then I figure out my tail lights and start transferring things over from the coming shipping crate that I've been driving and put it in, put it all in this truck. Okay, I found me some U-boats that I think are going to work back here in my little rusty row of junk and potential vehicles. This is a 77 F-250 four-wheel drive high boy that is a parts truck due to some idiot with a burning torch who used to own it. But anyways, I'm going to rub the two U-bolts off this side and use them to hold the front of my bed down, I hope. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the tripod, but all I'm doing is cutting the torch cut pieces off the ends of the studs there and then taking the nuts out. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. All right, so now that that game has been played, I can take the right angle milling machine with a flap disc on it and dress up the ends of these bolts and go stick them in. Okay, so right in there and over there, you can see the U-bolts worked, but they didn't work as good as I want them to. I'm going to add some more bracing up under this bed later on down the road because I'm just not real confident in the engineering of this thing. I'm just going to add more bracing because I'm overkill on everything. But for now, it'll work. Moving on to the taillights. I got to go get taillights. Great. All right, so that's the end of episode two. Uh, hate to kind of cut it right there, but the next bit is a whole bunch of taillight wiring and stuff like that. And getting into any of that makes it an hour and 15 minutes long trying to show y'all anything. So I'm trying to shorten these episodes up some. That way it's not such a big chunk to have to watch all at once because I'm sure people are clicking on it and saying, oh, this is iron something long. I don't want to watch all that. I'm trying to make it to a shorter video where folks will actually watch it. But anyways, uh, that's going to end episode two. And thanks for watching.